Hello and welcome to the video. This is the maiden of this thing here. Thank you for all of you that have been uh, leaving very nice comments on the build series. I'll put a link down to the whole thing below. Now, for those of you that are eagle-eyed, you'll have spotted that this is slightly different from where we left it off last time. Uh, I have waited to do this maiden video because uh, I've been playing with a couple of things. First thing to mention is that uh, there's now a, a real DJI Air unit at the front. This is one of the 3D printable enclosures that you can download from the E-Wings website. Uh, so I have the two antennas sticking out the side. I had uh, made the foam enclosure for the Cadix one uh, before E-Wings actually came out with their own particular 3D printed version for that. And also, I, I, I kind of wanted the extra rigidity up here rather than this uh, it kind of be made of a lightweight foam that I'd used. I needed something um, a little bit sturdier. So I took the opportunity to pop in one of these and to use a 3D printed mount. Loads of 3D printed mounts available for the Vorticon, just like all the E-Wings. So whether or not you're running a run cam, a regular camera, whatever, uh, it'll all fit. Uh, the other big difference is, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to see this in the video, um, the prop and motor have changed quite a lot. Uh, I'll get onto that in a minute. So let me run through very quickly the stuff that I have done. So if you are building along with this, uh, you will get to the same place. Uh, lots of learning uh, in the past week or two while I've been flying and maidening this. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the travel that you need on the control surfaces. Because the control surfaces are huge and they go the full length of the wing, you don't need masses of travel. You need about eight millimeters in either direction. And actually I would set it so that you give yourself a couple of millimeters of reflex, i.e. the elevon is slightly raised uh, for the default position. The recommended motors on the E-Wings website are really good. I would use those as your starting point. The most that I initially put on was an AS2814. That's the team motor one. Again, I'm putting links to all this below, so don't worry. Um, and I use that with a 1200 kV motor and a 9x6 prop. Now, that would get it into the air, uh, but launches were challenging. Let's put it that way. Uh, the recommended motor for it was a 1400 kV motor with a similar prop. So um, the two options for me, I could either go and get the 1400, which was definitely on the cards. Uh, at the moment, there is a 1400 kV in the T-Motor AS2814, so that wasn't an option. However, I had the opportunity to do some motor testing with Ben from 3DXR. And we put loads of motors and props through their paces and found that actually I could get significantly more top end thrust and get it more efficiently by actually reducing the KV and increasing the prop size. So I'm using an AS2814 1050 KV motor with a folding uh, 10, uh, 11 by 5 inch prop. Um, there's a whole video that actually goes through the full test details that will be coming soon. So stay uh, stay tuned for that. I'll kind of go through how we figured all that out. So if you want an endurance build, well, longer flight times, uh, that's probably the setup to use. I think it's the one that actually Greg's going to put on the website because uh, it's only wacky people like me that are doing things like trying to figure out how to get the thrust more efficiently. Um, next thing to talk about then is uh, about the launching. Uh, this is quite a heavy bird. It was about 1.5 and a bit kilograms before I put the new stuff in the nose. Uh, it was 1.6 odd kilograms with the heavier prop, uh, this stuff in the nose and the extra little bit of weight in the front uh, just to get everything to balance up. So when I put it together, you know, 1.6 kilograms in a, in a model this size is quite a weight. Um, however, don't be worried by that at all. These things, I've heard of pilots flying them up to two kilograms of weight. Uh, and you'll see in a minute how beautifully it flies. These wings are massive. And it, uh, this thing floats like you wouldn't believe. Other thing to mention, I'm running this with INAV. 
So uh, you do need eight degrees of up tilt, so you need the nose slightly up for it to uh, fly without losing altitude. Uh, if you're gonna be doing manual launches, then what I would do is give yourself about another five millimeters of uh, up tilt on your Elevons just to get that model uh, launched and just give it full beans. You have to give it kind of 100% throttle, have some uh, up elevator on your control surfaces and throw it and it will be away. Uh, if you're gonna use iNav, then uh, don't be afraid to do exactly the same thing. Give it 100% throttle. Uh, the only thing again is just, you know, about eight degrees is roughly where it needs to be with the setup I've got it here. Uh, that means that it will cruise without losing altitude. Anyway, enough of me banging on. Let me just show you one of the videos. Uh, this was the test that I did. Uh, thank you to Ross, um, one of my friends who uh, came to the field in a socially distanced way to actually film everything. Uh, and uh, this was the first test of the launch. Now, a couple of things to note. Uh, I was giving it about 70% throttle when we launched it. And even with the huge thrust out this prop, this is nearly three kilograms of thrust at full tilt. Um, it was reluctant to just leap into the sky. So uh, after that video, we changed it so that basically this thing's on like 90%, 100% throttle and you throw it and away it goes. So I'll uh, hand over to the video and then I'll see you on the other side and I can talk about the lessons that I learned and where we go from here. Ready? Woo! <laughs> so there's a fence behind us though, isn't there? That's yeah, there is. So if you, you basically, if you do another three, six, just keep it turning yeah. now. And then where you see yourself, keep going. This actually is pretty good. Yeah, come round, keep coming. Okay. okay I'm going to do, and I'm going to come in. Across Which way? The field. Across the field. Okay. Yeah, okay, Hopefully cut the power. Into the, into the here you come, right, now, that's it. Yeah, nice, nice. Bit to the left, yeah. Floor. Yeah, okay. Floats. Yeah, she floats nicely, that's good, yeah, power off. And, oh yes, perfect. Very good. Okay. Yeah, that, that floated, floated very nicely. Oh, I can still see it. So that's how it uh, went on that flight. Um, as I said, now uh, I give it full throttle and the launches are an awful lot easier. So I was getting, I don't know if you heard what I was saying there in the background, because um, I was stood, of course, socially distance away, which doesn't help with the, with the audio pickup. But cruising on this was about 15 amps. Now, the cool thing is, is when I'd finished that particular flight, I checked the battery when I got back to base, uh, doing the calculation, it means I'm going to get about 21 minutes out of the 4,000 milliamp hour 4S battery that is in here. If I was using the recommended 5200, that would give me probably about 26, 27 minutes. Uh, the disappointing thing, and I need to do more flying with this, I need to do an awful lot more flying, I need to see and measure the uh, maximum current she's pulling when she is launched, uh, compared to the stuff that we did on the bench. I need to uh, get a lot more information about the cruise current because the cruise current, it could support a lithium ion pack. If I could get my 7,000 milliamp hour lithium ion pack in here, I could potentially get 36 to 40 minutes of flight time. Uh, if I am being gentle with the throttle and potentially using um, the very floaty characteristics of this model, uh, yeah, we might be able to squeak to 40 minutes. However, I need to fly a bit more. Uh, I think the launch current could be a little bit rich for a lithium ion battery. Uh, but I'm probably gonna do another video in about six, eight weeks once I've had a lot more time with this uh, and we can explore that in more depth. It is very, very stable in the air. The, the weight of this thing uh, and the power when you've got the right motor and prop installed means that it doesn't care about wind. Uh, just flies and floats and it doesn't want to come down it is really really nice it's very very easy to fly it's very forgiving again with the throws of about eight millimeters up and then eight millimeters down is all you're going to need 
and that will give you easily enough to get in and out of trouble without any problem. Uh, but one of the things that really surprised me was just how floaty she is. Uh, flying in the manual mode and just pootling around and even cutting the throttle and just gliding around, uh, it's effortless. So compared to the Black Hawk, uh, this is an awful lot easier to fly and uh, very forgiving. You know, I came in that approach that we've just looked at. Uh, you know, I probably did the best part of 350, 400 yards uh, with the motor off. And um, she would have probably done another 100 yards easily without me kind of pushing the nose down. The only challenge, of course, is those launches. Again, if you're manual, 5%, uh, 5 millimeters of up tilt on your elevators, full beans, throw it, you'll be fine. If you're using iNav, then again, full beans and make sure you have uh, about 8 degrees of up nose tilt uh, so that she uh, she's the neutral position is absolutely right but uh, this is lovely another cracking model and a really good diversion from all the stuff that's been going on over lockdown 3.0 so thank you for staying with it hopefully if you're interested in building we'll give you some ideas for how you're going to do yours this is one of those fab models that you can just build it how you want uh, again links below to the motors props uh, including all the parts for the foldable prop and I'll also share the um, I did a custom uh, prop uh, thing on here uh, for Thingiverse so that it doesn't open because if it opened too far it might catch the vertical stabilizers so again I'll put a link below to that as well Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.